All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the GSL Team League, the Global StarCraft II League. I am Moltrap, with me here is Kaldor, and we are gonna have another Terran versus Zerg match here. I am Yoda is owning face. He's basically just taking a lightsaber and he's cut through half of the TSL roster already, but they have sent out Symbol to face him, another Zerg player. And I was like, wait, Symbol, I don't know Symbol. Why have I not heard of him before? Symbol is actually formerly known as Neil, N-E-E-L. So you might have heard of him before. He has been in uh, a lot of tournaments previously. So yeah, he's been doing really well in the ESV weeklies lately. So we're gonna see possibly some really good play out of Symbol. And uh, a little bit of trivia about Symbol. He actually also played on GOM TV in Brood War, back when they did the GOM Classics. Oh, cool. Neil, Neil Foyu as he used to be called, was the guy who knocked Idra out of the uh, GOM TV Classic Season 2 back in Brood War. So he's been around for a while. Anyway, we're going to see if he can face off against Yoda here in game number four at the GSL Team League. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. As mentioned before, he was able to win the, the first online qualifier for the Iron Squid Tournament in uh, Paris. He beat a lot of very good players. TSL Symbol! Another Zerg that's going to face Yoda and the Terran player for Incredible Miracle. He is starting at the bottom left of the map in the blue colors. Here we see once again in the fourth game. I am Yoda! I just talked to Major a little bit about the game between yep. Yoda and Revival and Major was actually really impressed with the build order and just the build in general of Yoda. He said it was a very, very strong build, well executed. And Revival basically just not in a position where he could win with the build that he tried. He said he was basically in build order win that we've seen there. So pretty nice strategy by Yoda. He's playing very strong today. Yeah, we already have a decent scouting going off by Symbol, and I really look forward to this game. I want to see if Symbol is able to take down Yoda. We only the last surviving player, well, not the last surviving player, but the player that we are all expecting to be the fifth player for TSL is obviously pulled. Yeah, definitely, definitely going to be pulled. Almost no matter what. Oh, drone coming in here. It's going to scout this barracks. It says no more sh shenanigans for you. I'm on to you. He also sees the gas being mined by Yoda. And so he's going to be aware this is probably going to be a pretty normal, well, probably going to be reactor Hellions, but we have yet to see. Could do something else. See if he does an add on when he hits 50. Nope. Pool is being built at 17, by the way. So he squeezes in a couple of drones. He's not getting gas just yet. But it's also really nice to see with all the overlords, how the scouting uh, evolves. What we've seen in the earlier stages of Daybreak is a lot of Zerg players trying to hover on top of that cliff near the second, between the second and the third base of the Terran player. But with a lot of Terrans trying to build a bunker, not a bunker, a barracks at the bottom and then killing the overlord, most Zergs have nowadays just um, used to get their overlords all the way to the left side of the map. First overlord is already uh, hovering there. Another one is on its way at the bottom right, so it's really nice to see how the positioning of the Overlords just evolve yeah. over time. He's got to be a little bit careful about that too. I mean, we've already seen Yoda use a Marine in a barracks to pick off an early Overlord. <laughs> he lifted his depot like it was going to stop something from happening, but the drone just walks right between those depots, gets all the way in there and steals the gas of Yoda, the second gas mine there. Nice little scouting drone there. He sees the factory. He sees the reactor being made, so he knows exactly what's going on now. We have the second base now being built for Yoda as well. Nothing out of the ordinary going to get access, yes, with the factory. And of course, that one extractor gets cancelled because he doesn't need double, um, double refinery right now. He doesn't really need the double gas. There is no way that it makes pays off just stealing it. And uh, he cancels it. The drone gets killed though. It's not able to retreat. There are already two Marines out. And this time we have once again, oh, we have a Spine Crawler and the Roach Baron at the same time. So still playing defensive. Yes, indeed. And yeah, it's 
beat is about half done for our Zerg player, by the way. He got two queens out immediately. And actually, we see Neil going for the Roach Warren. Sorry, Symbol, I should call him. Going for the Roach Warren there, as well as the Spine Crawler. So he is really worried about these Hellions. I might a little be a little surprised. too worried. Oh, the second command center is being built now, and a roach oh. attack would actually do a lot of damage. The spine crawler is a little bit uncharacteristic if you try to put damage onto your opponent, but we have Zergling speed now coming up as well, and I've seen a lot of Zerg versus Terran games where the Zerg actually decided to push out with roaches and did a lot of damage. Very nice cancel on the... the well, I, I didn't really agree what he did there. Seven roaches are being built. He's going to put some pressure on his opponent. Eight roaches, and he has the searching speed for the follow-up. But yeah, the cancel on the tumor was really nice. At the same time, he placed it down right in front of the Hellions again. That was not so nice. <laughs> so, I don't know. The first move was pretty cute, and then he just screwed yeah, that, up. That was a little silly. But let's see how much damage he can uh, deal with this push. And uh, it might actually be quite a lot, because we don't have any Marauders. We don't have anything that he can build against the roaches right now. As soon as he realized the Roaches are on their way, which is now. He will start to build at least one Marauder. There it is. Marauder is being built immediately, and he and throws down a bunker. Very but smart. let's see into how much that will actually accumulate. Obviously, obviously, Symbol is not trying to go for some kind of all-in. We don't have the bailing nest, so he's not going to go for some kind of Roach bailing all-in. No, he's joining up behind it. He already built eight drones. He has the spine crawler, so even if the Hellions try to run by, he will have some defenses against the Harris units of his opponent, yeah. of Yoda. And uh, building that hatchery at the front there as well, so you can get that macro hatch going. Oh, he's going to pick off the SCV building nice. the bunker. The bunker doesn't complete at the natural. He's going to probably be able to finish this one in the main. Yes, he will, but that means that actually these roaches are going to be able to pick off the depot and stop this expansion from getting up uh, and mining. So this is actually going to pay off. If that had been a little bit different, a little bit later, the bunker would complete, the Marauder would be in it, and those roaches would do nothing. They would have actually been a really bad investment. I was a little bit worried for Symbol there for a minute, but this actually pays off. He's going to stop that expansion from mining. So despite the fact that he has three orbitals right now, uh, Yoda is not really able to mine very much. Very nice move, by the way. He's trying to get to third, but he sends out a bunch of roaches ahead, so just that he is able to take down the Hellions. And he's delaying the second base of... Yoda for a while. I really like it. Symbol is not overcommitting with his roach attack. He does not try to get up the ramp. Usually, when you don't have the second bunker on top of the ramp, you see most Zerg players trying to get into a position where they can snipe one of the supply depots. And the Terran player will be faced with the choice to either let the supply depot die and try to fight the units inside his main base, which is mostly a really stupid idea, or try to repair with SCBs. But three of the Roaches can just pick off an SCD with one shot, so the Terran player loses a lot of SCDs. This time, Yoda defended very, very well. He only lost a little bit of time there with his uh, second base. The third base is already on its way, but very well done. And yes, nice, sniping a bunch of additional Hellions. Symbol is playing really well so far. He has a decent supply lead. He's getting yeah. plus one, plus one now. He's getting his lair tech, three bases, and a very, very nice saturation on his base, uh, on his all three of his bases. 63 harvesters to 36. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Symbol's got a really good economy going right now. He's going to have an even better one once that third base finishes in just a second. Overlord running in here to scout. The Overlord spotted every single production for the building. Yep, so he knows exactly what's going on. It's going to be bio tank is very likely what's going to happen here. And he's actually also spotted the third base with that Overlord up at the top. So he knows, yeah, he knows exactly what's going on. And right now, probably going to see him maybe get a few more drones, but for the most part, he's just going to start powering up units at this point. He didn't realize there were already a bunch of siege tanks. Uh, thank God for the Zerg player. We don't have concussive shell just yet, so the Roaches will be able to get in, into safety. It doesn't use stim. He doesn't have any medivex yet, so using the stim in just in order to kill those roaches wouldn't have been all too cost of fetch. Yeah. Heard the tail end of that zergling popping at that watchtower. He needs to spread creep Whoa. at his third. He just built 44 zerglings. Yeah, he needs to spread a little bit creep at the third base now in order to spot his opponent's movements early on. He has overlords everywhere. He's actually doing a really good job at positioning units across the map. And we have him with a finished tier 2 tech. It's going straight for the roach speed and he's going for the infestation pit. A decision uh, that I really like in uh, this situation. Yeah, it's a very good idea. Yoda is now putting on some pressure here. And again with roach speed, something, there's something strat- Oh, and he comes nice. in with some for the flank! Go the tanks are on seats! 
Very and well done. Everything's going to die. The it's whole, push. The whole TSL bench is just now clapping like crazy. You might have even heard that through all the microphones. And 12 additional drones are being built. Symbol has a commanding lead now. He is going for plus two, plus two upgrades. Road speed is about to finish. A fourth base being built by Yoda, but he will have a hard time securing his third, let alone oh. placing down a fourth. So this is very, very nice for Symbol now. No, it's too bad he didn't go in and attack that third base when he had the chance. The forces moved down to just stop it. But yeah, at this point he can just basically try and harass different directions, try not to lose too much, but keep Yoda pinned in his base while he gets all of this tech. And in fact, He's there we taking. go. Infestors are about to finish. So not only the Infestors, but the glands. Pathogen Glands, which times out very well. But at the same time, he's already going for the Latte, uh, Hive Tech, sorry. Because he just can't afford it, he can't get all those upgrades. He just destroyed the whole army of Yoda without losing anything. Yep. He's getting a fourth base, a fifth base. He's just getting everything right now. He's just getting everything. Painly Nest going down as well. 2-2 two, two upgrades are going on, so he's actually going to be ahead in, in his Zergling upgrades as well. He knows that the current situation, it go, it's going to be really hard for him to take down the third base because there are already tanks in position. So instead of trying to just break through the defenses of the Terran player, he decides to play it like super safe tech, like crazy, take two additional bases and make sure that the Terran player is not getting a fourth base. So he does that really well now. Hive is about to finish at the 15 minute mark. We have the drop ability being researched as well. It's going to be a very, very nice game. He really is getting is everything. He's lead. getting Overlord speed, Overlord drops. He's getting Burrow, he's getting the Banelings. He's getting now the uh, Adrenal Glands as well. This is just this is crazy. And he's got Ultralis a pretty decent Cavern. armory. Ultralis Cavern, <laughs> man. And he's droning up for his new bases since he does have five bases now. He's already on 83, I don't... Did he build a... Di no, okay, he just, 83. just finished eight more drones, I think. Yeah, yeah, he did. I, I, I was sec for a second, I thought he would try to get uh, up to 90 to 100 drones, which is definitely too much, but with 83, it's a little bit too much, but he will be all right. There we go. And yeah, so he's going to be in a beautiful position. And, you know, it really just came down to that one attack there. He built a lot of Zerglings. Here's a little bit of a drop going out in the south. Probably not going to do too much. Now, of course, we did see him go for the Investor Tech, so he doesn't have Mutas to really clean this up. Uh, but he's going to be able to push it back. Just with Zerglings. In the middle of the map, we have a little bit of movement for our current player, Yoda, trying to get into position. The Siege Tanks are retreating. Nope, there are actually no Siege Tanks, only the Hellions. Hellions are being caught off guard, no siege chains. Uh, I thought for a second that he loaded two of them into one of the medivacs, but he did not. Siege chains are still safe in the main base. Plus three, plus three is now being researched. He's far ahead in upgrades, getting the Ultralisks now, Ultralisk circling. But we have the first few ghosts being built, and he's getting this another Ghost Academy. So we might see nukes, which are really, really strong on a daybreak, especially because you can uh, nuke a couple of uh, expansion positions from. Uh, Oh from no! Safety, just, uh, from Yoda gets caught and seized! Whoa! Huge spike! Oh, look at that! Units. And now the Overlord's coming in with Banelings in them! If he gets anywhere near those there, <laughs> the fungal goes off! Everything gets slaughtered! Oh god! Symbol is rolling Yoda! Yoda hardcore. just definitely had an FML moment right there when those two fungals hit. Oh man! That's what happens when you get caught on siege. Oh, and now I think he can just overrun him if he wants to, or he can sit back and wait for the 3-3 three, three Ultras to finish. He doesn't even have the Ultralisk just yet. He's going in with Zergling Baneling. He's in the main base taking down another Ghost. 190 supply against 121. The plus 3, plus 3 upgrades on even halfway down. He's pulling the drones. He's, He's pulling, pulling drones. drones. Manor drones coming off the supply line. Manor Baneling morph. Yoda is being completely overrun! <laughs> the Banelings destroy everything! And there is the counter <laughs> Manor Mules and the GG! Yoda's run is over. Symbol ended his opponent's win streak and takes the first win wow. for TSL. And a little bit of hope creeping into the eyes of the TSL players now as Symbol absolutely stomps, stomps Yoda in that fourth game. Very, very well played. Look at that pulse even like, yeah, you did great, man. That was awesome.
Very, very nicely played. Very, very nice performance. And now it's going to get really, really interesting. There's the team Incredible Miracle, and they are just now thinking what they can do in order to stop Symbol. So who is it going to be? Well, I mean, <laughs> they've got their whole bench to work with now because yeah, they've only sent out Yoda. I mean, Yoda was just their, their fodder, their pawn, and he got three kills already. So they can take their pick right now. And we're going to find out in a moment who it is. But... Yeah, they're probably going to want to send out, I don't know, who, I'm trying to think of who, they don't want to send out MVP yet or Nesty. I'm not sure if they'll send Lucira. Lucira is pretty good at ZVZ, but they might not want to trust it to a Zerg. I would actually Zerg. wait for them to send out a Protoss player. Maybe Seed? Seed already. You might say, uh, see Seed already, yeah. but well. There are a lot of good players. They could send out Happy, for example, as well. Happy would be a good choice. Yeah. Happy would be a good choice too, actually. There are a couple um, of really, he's good really, choices. really strong. He's a really strong player. Um, yeah, I mean, I am basically as their pick, and they're going to be able to send out someone pretty good uh, if they want to. Symbols can have his work cut out for him now. Of course, I am. They might be thinking, you know what? We're we only have to win two more games. We still have Nesty, and we still have MVP on the bench. Although Nesty doesn't always play in the team league. They might be confident enough, they might throw out someone less experienced to give them some exposure too. So we might see someone we haven't heard of before. Mm. Yeah, know. definitely. They have the chance now and uh, they might do it. So let me have a quick look. Symbol's record, he actually doesn't have the best record against Protoss, so Protoss wouldn't be a, a bad choice. He lost to Genius, that's one of the only matches that I can see. And his uh, record right now, he lost to Genius and uh, GSL November, Code A. So I guess that the Incredible Miracle team will be definitely aware of that. But yep. let's see what's going to be the next map matchup. I'm actually being really excited about it. And there's the team of Who Incredible is Miracle. It going to be it is. Let's see. I think that is. I actually don't know who that is. That, that is, is seed. seed. It is Seed. Okay. It's a Protoss player. Yep. Very good. Kind of what we were expecting. Yep. <laughs> he looks a little bit angry. Who? He looks well. Um, uh, a symbol. Oh, that he is. does kind of. Oh, oh, actually, they, we had a quick shot of symbol, and he looks really determined. He looks like, oh, come on, bring it. <laughs> well, here is show seed. me what you got. Seed is in code A. It's just gotten in this season, and you know, like I said, we've seen some really good stuff from Seed in the past. If I remember correctly, he did. Uh, is it Seed that got an all kill several seasons ago, or am I thinking of someone else? And by the way, um, there are still people tweeting uh, me uh, in regards to the slap, and uh, most of them agree that your puns today were not cute enough to make you avoid <laughs> it. So we'll probably do that next time. We have to prepare that, but it's not forgotten. <laughs> Oh, we can we can forget you it. it okay. To, you brought it onto yourself. I mean, twenty, twenty. I was I was re I <laughs> really thought it would go for like a hundred. I yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. We have a pretty cool hammer in the gom house that I might use on you. Oh yeah, that uh, that like plastic hammer. Yeah, and it's pink as well. I can I can handle that. I think. Okay, so I'll bring it the next time we have to cast. <laughs> Probably it's for the next for the next GSTL, which is going to be next week, the weekend. But let's focus on today's GSTL a little bit. We have Entombed Valley, ladies and gentlemen. Symbol against Seed. It's the first Zerg versus Protoss that we see today. Yeah, we finally get to see a ZVP, and that's exciting. Good to see all the different matchups. Good map choice, by the way, for the Protoss player. The map is about to start, guys. We will be back in the next few seconds. Another game at the GSTL. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 